what's up, day walkers and fellow travelers of the night. Tonight, I want to talk about a couple of omnibuses that are out there that you can pick up yourself if you're a Moon Knight fan. I've had these for a couple years now, ever since the success of the show. And as I slowly got into the character more and more and Blue got really into the character thanks to the show, it's kind of been a bonding experience for us. And then I was like, well, I want to see more about the character in the comics because I really only know kind of the Jeff Lemire run and a couple appearances he made with Ghost Rider and other characters in the 90s and stuff and kind of that Spider-Man crossover he did with the Punisher that J.M. Demetrius wrote which was called Round Robin which always felt a little off to me because I'm like I don't know if I know the full story here so I was like let's dive into this character and as these omnibuses came out we picked them up one at a time. And so I wanna show off some of the footage that we recorded of these omnibuses uh, that Blue was like, no, we're gonna do reshoots, <laughs> you know? And I want you to re-record your, your whole video. And I'm like, okay, I get it. Like he takes Moon Knight very seriously because it's a big part of our life. And uh, after we got diagnosed, you know, and I learned that I was part of a system which I didn't know I was for years. And then eventually the, you know, blackouts and the missing time started to become a little obvious. And especially when I had roommates. Uh, and they would sometimes point things out and I'm like, oh, okay. So, all right, let's let's uh, let's explore this. Let's see what's going on. And, you know, I have seizures, so maybe it's just that. Uh, but it turned out it was, you know, obviously I was part of system. And when I learned that, it scared me. And so I was like, well, I wonder if there's any moments like that in the comic books because the show deals with that. And I wonder if they pulled that element from the comics at all. And they kind of do and they kind of don't. You know, I know the show pulls a lot from the Lemire run, which is not in omnibus form at this moment um, or collected in a big way. I mean, I know they have the trade paperback paperback version of it, but uh, they don't have it in an omnibus form. So we may get there. Uh, we'll see. Because right now, these five that I'm going to talk about today have a lot of the history of the character in this, in chronological order of appearance as well. So you have the first volume which came out, which is awesome that they did this. And of course, every one of these has two covers, but uh, the one I have is just the one you could get online on Amazon and stuff. I think if you go get them at your local comic stores, you might get a different cover or you might get the option of a different cover. Sometimes they have this cover that I'm showing you here. But uh, this book, you know, this first volume has a lot of that early stuff in there because Moon Knight didn't get his own title for a little while. At first, you know, he appeared in Werewolf by Night. And of course, you have those two issues that are here in this omnibus that started off and you kind of get introduced to Mark, I guess, more Moon Knight than anything. You don't really see a lot of his alternate side or his uh, alter egos, but you mostly see Moon Knight. He's hired by this group to go after Werewolf by Night. And then from there, you know, he befriends Werewolf by Night and they kind of, you know, he's like, I'm not going to kill this guy. He's a kid. You know, Jack Russell's just a kid. And this group that hired me turns out they're actually the bad guys here. So he kind of wises up, but he still has like a mercenary background and he's a gun for hire in a way. But then eventually he moves into being his own thing. And that's where like Doug Mensch and Don Perlin, who co-created him and rest in peace, Don Perlin, who passed not too long ago. Um, you know, he, they kind of created this character, the look of him, the backstory of him. And over the course of time, and as he appeared in other books like Spider-Man, Spectacular Spider-Man, he appeared a couple issues in, and Marvel 2-in-1, and then he had a lot of stuff in the backup of the Hulk magazine, because Hulk, for a while, didn't have his own comic book, but he had Hulk magazine, and that's where, in the backup pages, where Moon Knight lived for a while. So a lot of that is collected in this first omnibus, and you kind of get the, the groundwork of his character, which started off, and I think Doug Mensch always meant to do some form of multiple personality, at least that's what... I feel like, you know, in a way after reading these, but he kind of approached it from that sense in the 70s where it was a little bit more James Bond or Jason Bourne, had more of a spy angle in a way where it was alter egos and, you know, fake IDs and stuff like that. And then over the course of like that first run or first year or two, once you get into that second year of the Doug Mensch stuff, you start to see a more psychological side of things. And you have Mark have this breakdown in a way and he starts dissociating and starts disconnecting to things. and. It was really interesting to read that and it's it feels a little dated the approach of it but i'm sure at that time it certainly must have stood out because this character made a big impact upon arrival you know uh, but he didn't have his own book for a while but this first omnibus collects a lot of those early adventures leading up to some of his own stuff and it's great it's really really great and i would say if you're a moon knight fan and you want to see the beginning years like you know the first like three or four maybe even five years of his comic book history a lot of it is in this first volume of the Omnibus. And also the second volume. The second volume has a lot of great stuff. It picks up from there, has the Moon Knight issues, you know, has the Marvel 2 in 1, some of the other stuff. There's a lot of cool stuff in this second volume as well that brings in the amazing and awesome Bill Sienkiewicz. And you get a lot of his artwork. You know, Bill was making a big splash in comic books around this time. This was before, I believe, New Mutants and stuff. But 
this run that he does really shines. I mean, artwork wise, especially not that the art in the first volume with all the different artists they had in that weren't great, but Bill is Bill. And if you like his style, this is great classic Bill stuff. It's so awesome. And so going through the second volume and learning more about the character and, and you know, not just Mark, but Steven and Jake and Conchu and bringing in all these other elements, it's really cool the way they expand things in the second volume. And so I would say if you want to see the original run, like that early era stuff, probably Doug Mensch's, you know, peak version of what he feels he wrote the best of in Moon Knight and what he added to the character and created with Don and other creators along the way, I would say pick up these first two volumes. They are awesome. If you get them on Amazon or, you know, anywhere online, you can probably find them at a good price. Buying them at your local comic store helps out local businesses, so I encourage that as well. Um, even if the price is a little bit more, it's still worth it to, you know, to help out a store that you probably frequent, you know, or hopefully will frequent a lot if you're a comic fan. And these first two volumes are amazing. And I would say great for understanding the foundation of this character who goes through quite the change over the years under the pen of other writers and artists and stuff, but still, you know, having this root form of him and just like what Doug always wanted to do with the character, it's all here in these first two volumes. The second two volumes actually change the name. They go by Mark Spector Moon Knight because in the 90s, when the character got reintroduced, it was like kind of mid 80s into the early 90s. They were like, we want to bring back Moon Knight and we want to do them a completely different way. So like Chuck Dixon and Howard Mackey, J.M. Demetrius, Al Milgram, Bruce Jones, a lot of these guys, they came in and added their kind of spin on the Moon Knight character. And it still had that psychological edge, but it had a very violent edge now that was really big in the 80s and early 90s with some of these street level characters was besides Spider-Man, who did have some dark times, he had the black costume and stuff. Um, and then Venom in it as well. But Punisher and Ghost Rider and these characters were really on the rise. A lot of these anti-heroes and vigilante types were very big. You know, Batman was doing really well over at DC. So there was a lot of, you know, interest in characters like this and characters that could potentially fit that mold. So when they looked at who they had at Marvel, they were like, we can put a darker stamp on Moon Knight. Not that he didn't have one to begin with, but we can really run with it. And he fits into kind of the zeitgeist and, and rising trend of what's happening right now. So they did this great run that split into two volumes. So this is volume one and two for Mark Spector Moon Knight. And I'm really glad they reprinted these because a lot of the stuff I had trouble finding uh, in single issues. Some of them, I mean, I, I couldn't, it's not like they were impossible to find. It was just that some of the later issues ran really high like Ghost Rider does because a lot of these books, you know, they printed a lot of them in the beginning because they sold well. But as they got near the end of their runs, they fewer and fewer copies exist. And so if you found one in good condition, it ran you like 60, 70, 80 bucks, some of them. And I'm just not made of money. So I was like, all right, well, if I can get all of these in two volumes and make payments on them, like online on Amazon or something, that would be great. So that's what I did. And I have volumes one and two now of Mark Spector. And this is actually some of my favorite stuff now that I've read it, because this stuff was mostly unknown to me before, uh, except for the Ghost Rider appearance and stuff, which is collected in one of these volumes. But these two runs here collect the entire 90s run, split into two parts. But then you also got the round robin storyline that crossed over with Spider-Man because Jam Demetria set up this like kind of Robin type character, a sidekick for Moon Knight, and they never went anywhere with it. And so he was like, well, I'm writing Spider-Man now. Why don't we bring that into my book in Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man, and we'll bring in Punisher and, you know, some of the street level characters like New Warriors and stuff. And we'll, I'll tackle that story, like that thread that was kind of you never know, finished or wrapped up. I'll tackle it over here and you can bring in a new creative team on the Moon Knight Monthly book. And that's kind of what happened. So that story went over into Spider-Man, but luckily all that's collected here in the first volume of Mark Spector Moon Knight. So you do get that whole story and the way it ends, even though it's, you know, it's a little cheesy, it has some cheesy moments, um, and it's weird that it wrapped up in another book, but still I'm glad it wrapped up at all because that would have been a major thread to just kind of leave out there. I'm sure a modern writer would have picked up on it, but it was cool that they wrapped it up back then too. So, uh, so yeah, having this and introducing some new villains and, and having this great artwork uh, that came in towards the end uh, of the run, which is fantastic, by the amazing Stephen Platt. Like, Stephen Platt, I think I knew of his work because of Moon Knight, even though I didn't own any of those issues. I just see in the images and stuff, whether online or just in comic shops hanging on the wall, because, like I said, those were the issues that would be, you know, 60, 70 bucks, some of them sometimes more, uh, depending on what shop you're in. And I would just see his artwork a lot. And I've seen him in other books and stuff, too, but... I was always thinking of him and Bill Sienkiewicz were always like kind of my go-to Moon Knight people until I read the Jeff Lemire run. 
um, which I read about like you know 12 or so years ago when I worked at a comic book store called Golden Apple in Los Angeles. And I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. I like the psychological element of this. It's, it works really well. But I never really fully got into the character, like I said, until um, Blue did really hardcore with the show. And then I watched the show and really fell in love with the performance, kind of the treatment of and how they portray DID in that show. Because imagine, like, I was very scared at that time uh, when I was being diagnosed. I was like, I'm scared. And they're like, it's okay. Like, this is going to show you that it's okay, that you're you're going to be okay. You just have to, you know, kind of be ready for what happens when you realize you're part of a system, which there is a, a major shift. There was for us anyway, considering how many years I went without knowing. And so for me, it was very scary. Uh, and I, I'm so scary to the point where, you know, I try to self-delete. And, and so because of that, I was even more scared and I didn't want to watch the show at first. And Blue, meanwhile, was watching it. He was making posts about it on our Instagram. He was so excited. Um, and I was like, I, I, I don't know if I'm ready. And he said, trust me, it's just a show. It's a comic book show. This should be the easiest thing for you to kind of step your foot into the world of acceptance. And I watched the show and he was right. Uh, I think it was around episode four or five was about to come out. I binged the first four and I did really like it. And then episode five just as hard as it is to watch and even talk about, really won me over. So these two volumes, I feel, are really great character stuff. Not that the earlier stuff wasn't, but I liked a lot of what they said about Mark Spector, Stephen Grant, and Jake Lockley, especially in these volumes, these two volumes here. And I thought the artwork was really great. And even though they're books that, you know, the first two volumes I thought were great too, they stand up. They still hold up to this day and age. I thought the art in that book was great. The storytelling was good. Had some moments where I was like, okay, this is 70s and early 80s, so I get it. You know, um, it doesn't make it bad. It just fits for that time. But I would say these two volumes, the Mark Spector Moon Knight ones, feel kind of modern too. There's some lines in there that are very 90s, of sure, of course, and some delivery and dialogue. But for the most part, I was like, wow, I, I'm really connecting with this, and I really liked it. And, uh, and I'm glad I read it in this order because I had another volume, which I'm going to call volume five, uh, but it's not part of these two. It's a more recent run on the book that is very well liked by a lot of fans out there. Very violent. And a lot of people I've seen online who do like this one, some of them don't even like the Jeff Lemire run because that one went more psychological and the artwork didn't go as gritty and realistic. Although I still love the artwork in the Jeff Lemire run too. But the David Finch artwork of this run is amazing, too. It's very violent. And this last volume that's currently out right now, but there are more Moon Knight omnibuses coming out. And we'll talk about them here in a minute. But in this last volume written by Charlie Houston, he's one of the writers of it. And they collect the entire 30 issue run that he started, even though he didn't write all 30 issues. But it does collect that entire run. And it starts with Charlie Houston's run. And it's got the art, like I said, by David Finch, who does a great job at it. And then you got Mike Benson and Greg Hurwitz who come on and write some of the later issues of that run to wrap it up. They tie it into the Civil War stuff and you kind of see where Moon Knight stands during Civil War and what happens afterwards when Norman Osborn takes over the world and becomes, you know, leader of the Dark Avengers for America. So there's that. Uh, he's not really taking over the world, but he's trying to for sure. He's got the Sentry and he made his Dark Avengers team. So you have Moon Knight during that era too, uh, which is great in the Thunderbolts era. And you can see him fight Venom and everything, which we've talked about in the Venom vlog. So there's a lot of cool moments for the character in this. But those first maybe 12 issues or so that Charlie Houston did, a lot of fans really, really love that. Because I think that was a lot of people's introduction to Moon Knight. That book really made a splash because Dave Finch's artwork was amazing and he was on a streak at that point and when people heard he was going to go over and do Moon Knight stuff people were like all right I never really read the character before I want to check it out and they did a great job those first 12 issues are very gritty very psychological there's a lot going on there's a, a disconnect between Mark and Moon Knight himself this is dealing with the aftermath of Mark and or Moon Knight cutting off the face of Bushman one of his greatest villains and leaving him for dead so there's a very violent beginning to this book and middle and end uh, for sure. And then the rest of the issues, I still think, keep up the pace with violent stuff. You get a cool story with Moon Knight in South America with Punisher, which is really cool, fighting the cartel. Uh, but then it also collects a Moon Knight annual in here 
and the Moon Knight Silent Knight one-shot, and also the Vengeance of Moon Knight series, along with the Moon Knight series from Shadowland, which was like a big Daredevil event. So this collects a lot of stuff, pretty much like another couple years, four or five years worth of stuff. And that's what I love about each of these omnibuses, is they give you a lot. I mean, that's what omnibuses do in general, sure, but this covers a big chunk of Moon Knight's history in the comic books, almost all of it. Not every single bit, obviously the Jeff Lemire run, and I believe the Bendis stuff, some of that's not in, in an omnibus yet, but I imagine we'll get a volume of that at some point, especially if these omnibuses that are out now are selling, which I imagine they are because we're getting another omnibus coming very soon with Jed McKay, which I'm very excited for. So his entire run that he's done all the way from issue one to 30 or wherever where Moon Knight died or Mark Spector died and Jake and Steven, obviously. And that run is being all collected in one big omnibus. And that will be the next volume that'll be coming out later this year. So I'll put a link down below to the Amazon link if you want to pre-order that or if you want to let your local comic store know that it's coming out and that you want one, pick it up. If you're not reading from Midnight Mission up to now, it's really, really good. I'm really loving the book. It's one of the best books that Marvel's putting out right now. And that ties into Blood Hunt and Blade and some of the other big events that are happening in comic books currently even. So to get all of that, it's like three or four years worth of Moon Knight comics in another omnibus. I'm very pumped to get all of it in one big book and put on the shelf with the others. And I know Blue is too, even though he's been reading it issue by issue along with myself, uh, it's still cool to have all of this great content and all this great material and artwork and all these great stories all in these big omnibus forms. And I'm very glad that they're selling well enough for Marvel to continue them. And I hope that the stuff that's still missing from Moon Knight, because we've gotten, you know, little four issue miniseries that were taking place in between big runs. We've gotten the big runs. We've gotten the Hulk magazine stuff like Marvel two and ones team up stuff, you know, with Power Man and Iron Fist. Like there's so much stuff collected in all these books that it's great to have them all in chronological order. So I would love to have the Bendis and, you know, Lemire stuff and anything else that's missing, put in another volume, and that'll go greatly with the Jed stuff. So to me, we are very close to having almost the entire run and every appearance of Moon Knight at some point in these books. Although we do need the Avengers West Coast stuff recollected in an omnibus. So maybe with the Lemire stuff, maybe they can squeeze that in there somehow and make it make sense. I don't know. But uh, maybe one or two more volumes to collect the remaining stuff that hasn't been collected yet. And now we got Jed McKay stuff coming out. So I hope, I really hope. And I hope we get a season two of the show or at least more Moon Knight and something else. I would love to see that. And I can't wait to see what Jake's costume looks like because he's now Moon Knight since Mark and Steven and the show have given up the mantle. And so now Jake is the Moon Knight. So I'm curious to see what his costume looks like and what version of the comic they'll pull from. Because I'd love to see black, you know, more black on him than white, um, just for the contrast. Uh, but I'm also see, you know, waiting to see how they explore him as a character, because in the show, he's not a cab driver. I mean, he is a limo driver in a way, uh, so, so we've seen, but, um, but we don't really know him as a character yet. And I'm curious to see how they tackle that, because the show does deviate from the comics. And that's what I learned while reading these is the show is different in a lot of ways, but I still like what the show did. You know, shows and movies are always interpretations. And so you take pieces of everything and you hope that you're just putting all the best stuff from everyone's run into what you do in the show. And I think the show did a great job. And even though I'm going a little backwards here and I knew of the character, but then watched the show and became very, you know, entranced by that. And then going back and looking at the lore of the comics, there's definitely a difference. And I like both for different reasons. Uh, but I do think the show interprets some of the cool stuff that I like about these runs, along with the Jeff Lemire stuff, into the show. I think they do a good job while also still making it kind of different with the mummy bandages on them and stuff. I think they do a great job. So I will have a review of the show coming up very soon because we got the Blu-ray, obviously, and I'll talk about the special features as well. But for now, I just want to talk about the Omnibus Collection and get this video out to you guys. So I hope this second, third time, I guess it was now that I recorded this, I hope this works for Blue and we'll put all the footage together and hopefully we make something that you guys enjoy. And if you do, hit the like button, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Let me know what you think. If you have any of these books or have you read them all? Or are you curious about them? Anything down below. We'll keep talking as always in the comment section down below. So thank you so much for watching the show as always. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you all in the future. Peace.